what's up you guys yeah <laughs> and shout out dad and mom like you guys are the best parents ever shout out to all you stay-at-home moms you guys make the world better going to cosmetology school at paul mitchell was a really good decision beautiful just like me Lily Bourne, you know, big, big name TikToker, big into social media. Um, what what got you started into social media? Well, let's just say I wouldn't call myself big. It's decent right now, but what really got me into it, like started taking it seriously, is more of freshman year. I had one video blow up. I would just post for fun like everybody else was doing. It was kind of just the thing that everyone was doing at that time. So I hopped on the trends, obviously. I usually set them, but you know, I had to hop onto this one. So I made one video with Charlie that actually did really good. It got around 7 million views and like 2 million something likes on a whole separate account. And then eventually that account got banned for whatever reason. I think someone was jealous of something. So they just kept reporting. But um, I would usually just make like dancing videos to like all like the different dances that were going on. Cause in quarantine, the dances were huge. It was oh, yeah. like people were dancing, people, that's when TikTok became. Renegade, renegade. Yeah, I used to make everybody do that. I would be walking around the house, guys, we're doing this podcast, yeah. we're doing this today. I was about to say podcast. I, I was in a few of them. Yeah. Go back and find them. Right. But those were all on my separate account that got banned. I had oh. over, I want to say around 300,000 followers on that account. So that one was doing really good. That was all basically dancing. That was all throughout quarantine. And then right about like two or three weeks before we got out of quarantine, that's when I got banned. So then I was like, um, like, I'm not going to do this anymore. Like, that was fun, but whatever. And then I kind of let it go for a little bit. But I got back into it recently when everybody else started getting back into it. And then I made another account and that one blew up because of my height your height that's what made my current account blow up because one of the first videos i posted on there i was standing next to my dresser and we all know i'm five foot okay, okay. five Let's foot it, she's... i'm five foot on the dot i'm not 411 <laughs> i'm not 410 i'm not a legal midget okay <laughs> i looked into that actually because i thought i was but I'm not, so, <laughs> but not that it. there's anything wrong with that, but I'm just not in their category. Anyway, so I blew up because of that and everyone was like, oh, how tall is she? What is the length of that dresser? Like, blah, blah, blah. Everyone was commenting, how tall is she? So I was like, you know, I'm going to ride this wave. I'm not going to tell them. And so then I was like, oh, me standing next to the fridge. And I would just make more videos similar to that one. So it would get onto all these people that are commenting on that one video to look at that one and then look at the next one. So I kind of used that to my advantage in a way. And then, you know, the height got leaked. So then they That's stopped smart. caring. You leverage the comments oh, in yeah. a way to like drive more views. Yeah, I was like, what's interesting smart. about this video? Let me use that to go get my bag right basically that's interesting because yeah. that brings me to like my next question is like you had a strategy of getting followers and getting views to that what's like one piece of advice you would give to somebody trying to start and go into social media one piece of advice i would give is just constantly post be Sister. constant on the trends be constant on what your viewers are most interested in like I have, I would say I have a pretty big demographic of viewers. A lot of my videos are completely different. Sometimes I'll be posting gym videos on like my routine. Sometimes I'll be posting my pump. And then sometimes I'll just do a cute little dancing video because I'm just a girl. And so <laughs> I'll just do that for some things. But recently I've been getting into more of like the haul type videos, like more of the influencer type mm -hmm. thing. 
still working out the kinks with that. They're not doing as good, but they're getting better as I continue to do it. So I would just say consistency is key. For sure. I feel like that's just like in just general good advice with anything you do. Yeah, honestly. You know, you're not going to blow. You could blow up for one post, you know, and get like, lucky. But yeah. You got to send that's out the content. That's pretty rare. Yeah. You, know, you got to just keep it going. Oh, yeah. Um, so you've mentioned you wanted to eventually start a podcast. You know, yeah. what's what's your vision with that? And how would you like leverage your social media experience into going into starting that? So, like I said, I have a big demographic and all my videos are different. So, realistically, I could post whatever on my account. Like, it's not just one specific audience that I'm tar targeting. It's really just everyone. So, I could post whatever type of podcast if I wanted it to be about makeup, if I wanted it to be about the gym, mental health, anything in that realm or just for fun. I could and I could just post it on there because it would just blend in with all my other videos because they're kind of all over the place. But with that podcast, it wouldn't just be me. It would be me and Sam because awesome. I think Sam is hilarious, but she's not good with – she's like <laughs> – she's the definition of millennial, I would say. Like the cringy, like – not that there's anything wrong with millennials, but sure. I mean, you know, you know, those ones I'm talking about where they, she's hilarious. She's hilarious. Yeah. But she doesn't know how to work with social media and like my type of generation of people, okay. you know what I mean? So I feel like us together talking about certain topics and just almost like what you're doing with your pod, mm -hmm. like very relaxed, like conversation piece. I kind of just want to set up a camera when me and her hang out and just keep it going absolutely like, and then just go through and clip it because we're hilarious when we get together i think that would do great like i'm always yeah. pushing for people to start their own thing do, you know try it yeah and full support with obviously from me you need any help with it i'd be more than happy to help with it because sam's hilarious oh yeah. you're funny like you guys have such different like personalities and you guys coming together and making something like that. I feel like your audience could be like huge and just oh, yeah. so, so different and just create your own thing. Like th that would be super cool to watch. Yeah. And it, I kind of got the idea from watching another podcast with, it's called the canceled podcast with Tana Mojo and Brooke Schofield. Okay. They Shout out do, what the, what's the podcast again? Uh, it it's called the canceled podcast. Okay. Shout out the canceled podcast. Yeah. So sure. it's two girls that get together. Sometimes they have guests on, but they basically just talk about, um, Tana used to be not used to be, she still is like a big YouTuber okay. and she is an influencer and she's done really well with that in her life. And she made like, that is her job. Mm -hmm. So eventually I kind of want to be on that level yeah. almost. And so I kind of look up to them a little bit, but they basically focus on pop culture and like what's going on in their life, like their dating life. And like, sometimes they get ratchet on there and I think it's hilarious because it reminds me of Sam. So I'm like, okay, like we kind of have the same dynamic, mm -hmm. but I feel like me and Sam would more just have funny conversations instead of talking about like what's going on. For you sure. Know what I mean, I think it's great getting influence and advice from listening to different types of podcasts like that oh yeah and just m twisting it taking the advice you get from that and just making your own thing out of those pieces of advice yeah and clips like i'm a huge podcaster i love listening i love consuming that type of content and learning a huge joe rogan guy yeah huge you know i love the full sun podcast you you can learn from all these different types lex friedman podcast like and those three are so different in what they do like yeah they're all podcasts but there's they target such different audiences i think yeah. like joe rogan is pro like obviously the biggest one on the planet and has such like a great you know reach to different types of people full send is more like like you said like pop culture like youtuber-esque and then yeah. lex friedman is more like computer guys and you know knowledge in that aspect but getting the different types of you know advice and consuming all three of those you can just you know take all that information in and then essentially create 
what you want to create out exactly. of yours, you know. So I would just recommend you consume as much podcast as you can. Yeah. Learn from them and make it your own. Yeah. You know? Because that is what I think is going to make you guys do well. Yeah. Is your own unique you know, relationship and, you know, the things you want to do. Yeah, because I kind of want it to be, like, everything kind of jumbled up into one. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, I watch the Cancelled podcast, but then I also watch a podcast by this guy, Leo Skeppy, and he mostly talks about bettering yourself and, like, just internalizing, like, you. Just basically, like, focusing on bettering you, basically. And he talks about, like, mental health, how to get over situations, what to do in certain situations and like obviously not everything like you can take and be like oh like this is what I'm going to do in that situation it's not like a guideline but I mean you know he can like, he's relatable mm -hmm. and so I can relate to him on some certain levels and then obviously for canceled it's more for entertainment and stuff but Leo Skeppy's podcast is more for just like knowledge and like worldly advice I would say so I kind of just want to mesh right. everything into one you mentioned advice, you know, one thing I think is huge now is negativity on social media. I mean, oh, yeah, it's crazy. Some people just get on there to be negative. And some people, and it's kind of sad because some people get famous and they go viral and they now have a platform and it's based off of negativity. Or it could just be based off of something that's completely fake. Right. Like. Recently, I was scrolling on TikTok and I saw this one girl make a lie about how she was, I don't know, something to do with a celebrity and she was their stylist or assistant, something like that. And she blew up, but it was all a lie. And now all of her videos, she's got like thousands of videos and they're all just lies. That's crazy. I don't get content like that because it's not entertaining it's just kind of messing with people's heads you know because then they read more into the story just to be disappointed yeah it's, so, it's like clickbait i mean the yeah nowadays like that's all you know i guess it used to be called mainstream media but like abc cnn like they're all based off of just getting clicks and getting views yeah and it's not based off of you know getting the real information exactly you know? and that's why i feel like long form podcast short form podcast just conversational types you get to dig in to the information analyze it and i think it's going to be beneficial for just the average person exactly you know to do it um but in regards to you know the negativity on social media like what, what's some advice you would give to you know somebody that's on social media and they're they're getting that negative you know, they're getting that negativity from it. What's, you know, something you would tell that person, like, how to deal with it? Don't believe everything you see on social media. Like, majority of social media is fake. Right. It's all fake. Everything you see is fake. That girl that you saw on Instagram, that's deal. fake. That's photoshopped. Like, I wouldn't compare. I've never been really bad with that, but I know... I have friends that are kind of bad with that. And like, I know a lot of women are kind of bad with that. Like looking at social media and seeing all of like these, oh, get ready with me. This is my morning routine. And they do 10,000 steps in the morning. And it makes you feel like, wow, I must be a piece of shit because I lay in bed for 25 minutes on my phone. And then I go make myself a coffee and then I make another coffee just to wake up. But I would just say it's not real. It's being on social media, scrolling through TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, even like it could be like, or X, my bad, X, still trying to adjust to that. I think everybody is. But I mean, you know what I'm talking about, exactly. but I, get it. I mean, it's basically like watching a reality TV show in a sense. Like it's all different. It's like the world's reality TV show is social media is kind of what I look at it as because it's not real, but it's portrayed as real. Right. You know what I mean? Like the Kardashians, like their show, half of that's scripted. Yeah. Like it's not reality. Exactly. There's like a false definition on reality nowadays. So I would just say it's all fake, honestly, and not to let it get to you. And as 
blatantly as I can say that, like, just don't let it affect you because it's not real. Like, yeah. there's really nothing else because, I mean, saying that it's kind of just like saying, oh, rub some dirt on it. But, I mean, at the same time, it's like that's what you got to do because there's nothing you can do. You can't stop the negativity from coming. You can't stop all this energy. Louis, <laughs> come on, buddy. I can't have you. I can't have you chewing that in the background, bud. Really, guy? Yeah. Come on, guy. Let's get into a different topic here. All right. Um, you recently started school at Paul Mitchell. Yes. Right? You're getting into cosmetology and esthetician stuff. Um, what piqued your interest into doing something like that? If I'm going to be completely honest with you, it was because I was really fucking stupid. <laughs> like, uh, I was never really good at school, but my high school experience was very negative. Everything kind of around high school where it actually matters was very negative. So I didn't really care about school. I never wanted to do good. But then just in this last, my senior year, towards the end of senior year, like my last semester, I wanted to do good. But by that time, it was kind of too late to turn everything around. So I decided, well, what the hell am I going to do with my life? Like, am I just going to sit at home and have mom and dad cook for me all the time. Like <laughs> I'm just going to use daddy's credit card to go to target again. Like mm -hmm. I can't do that. So it's like, damn, I'm really growing up. I think I was kind of stuck in like the, Oh, I'm just going to be a little kid forever. Like I have mom and dad, like blah, blah, blah. But then I kind of woke up and I was like, Oh shit. Like what the hell am I going to do? So it kind of just hit me all at the same time, like growing up wise. So then I was like, okay, like, what am I interested in? So I kind of started playing around with like different ideas and shit. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> Come on, Lou, for fuck's sakes. Basically, I was stupid. <laughs> and so I was like, well, there's no way I'm getting into college. And even if I did go to college, I don't know what I would study because I'm not really big into like getting a certain degree, sticking to a certain job, working a nine to five. That's not how I envision my life. And it might just sound like I'm a lazy person. I mean, I can be, I definitely am, but I still want to do something that is good and positive. And then by that time, when it was time for me to start looking to, into what I'm doing, and I knew college was not in the cards for me, really. So I was like, what can I do to make a positive impact on not only myself, but other people? So I was like, okay, well, look good, feel good, right? Like, I started going to the gym, I started looking good, I started feeling good. So I was like, maybe I can do something like that. I looked into like, being a personal trainer for a little bit, but then I was like, eh, you know, I don't know who would take advice from a five foot, hundred pound girl. So I don't know about that. So then I was like, no. And then I was like, oh, let me do your hair. Let me do your makeup. So then I would always do that for my friends and stuff. And I'm good with all types of hair too. Like I do Dina's hair. I give her silk presses all the time. Like I can do a lot of stuff with it. So I was like, let me just use that to my advantage. And I wanted to save money and doing stuff on myself. Like I do my own nails and like all this other stuff. And it really got me interested. I really just wanted to do nails. But then I was like, there's no nail school around here. And like, who just goes to school for one thing? So going to cosmetology school at Paul Mitchell was a really good decision in the end because I'm getting certified in all these other things and I didn't know how big of a world it actually is and the beauty industry is constantly changing like again with like kind of ties into social media too because on social media there's a bunch of different trends that are going around like the dark hair is in now but Last summer, it was the blonder, the better. And then everyone's just following the trends. Now you want to get your eyebrows done. Now you want to get them laminated. That wasn't a thing a couple of years ago, but there's constantly new things that I can constantly learn and get certified in. And I just love 
looking good and making other people look good, I know they feel good. Like today, I did my friend Maddie's hair and the smile on her face, I wish I got a picture. When she was done, just looking at yourself and seeing the outside so put together, pristine, pretty, just makes your inside kind of glow and like your aura just expands 10 times more. So I just love seeing that happen to other people because I know it happens when I'm done getting ready. I like look in the mirror for 45 minutes and I'm like, <laughs> oh my, like again with the slick back, like, do you know how long this took me? But don't I look good? Like it just puts you in such a better mood. It might sound conceited, but I mean, it's the truth. Like who looks good and still feels like shit? Name one. True. I can't True. because I look good on the outside because I also feel good on the inside. And then it, it's basically like you're mirroring yourself almost. And I feel like it could just help a lot of people. And so make other people feel good. And it's very selfless, but can be selfish at the same time. Right. I think that's fascinating that you like you enjoy it for like a self selfless reason. Yeah. Like you go, you love how you know, that person feels after you, you do whatever, you know, service you do for that person. It's yeah. like seeing that person enjoy, you know, how they look and feel after it. Like that's got to be a great feeling for sure. Oh, yeah. And but also it does come with its little, you know, backside. Like if you do bad, you feel like shit. Like mm -hmm. you just messed up that person's whole day. Like they're going to be pissed until they get it fixed. Yeah. Like. If I messed up someone's highlight and gave them a piece that was that thick in the back of their head, oh, they would be walking around talking shit about me, going around telling everyone not to go to me. Oh, she was horrible. Look at what she did to me. Mm -hmm. I would be the topic of their rant for the day. Probably for the next month. Oh, yeah. Or until, until they get, they it, get fixed. it fixed. Like, yeah. I would be the reason they're <laughs> ranting. Yeah. Like, I would be the last straw on their bad day. Like, oh, my coffee, I had to refill my water. It wasn't ready for me. Oh, I ran out of my creamer. Oh, my grapes were moldy. Like, oh, she fucked up my hair. Like, what the hell? So it does come with its negatives, but I mean... The positives definitely outweigh the negatives, so I do enjoy that. And it's, like I said, it's constantly changing. There's always something new. I mean, even though you can make a lot of money with it, I kind of don't want to do it full time because realistically, my future, I just see me being mom. I just want to be a mom. I just want to have my kids. I just want to stay home. I just want to make dinner and be in the kitchen barefoot basically <laughs> <laughs> like, that's awesome that is my end goal so really this little helping people thing with cosmetology and esthetician it's really just a time holder it's okay. just to occupy me for a little bit until i get to that next stage in my life nothing wrong with that that's a very traditional you know way of thinking and i feel like girls um and women just get away they got away from that a little bit like girl power like oh I'm yeah all for girl power do what you want to do you want to have a career you want to have a career yeah but, good for you could not be me i'm a lazy piece of shit yeah but don't you know don't shit on the women that want to stay home and oh yeah want to be moms yeah because i'll tell you what being a mom you know that is a full-time job like your that job is children. the hardest you know being a uh you know, a stay-at-home mom is one of the hardest jobs on the planet. Oh, yeah. I mean, debate me. Like, for real. Like, you want to climb the corporate ladder? Whatever, fine. Anybody yeah. could do a job, no matter how high it is. Doesn't yeah. matter. But being a mom, being a good mom, I should say, being a good mom, it's difficult. Oh, yeah. Know? So, it's like wanting to do that, seeing our mom stay home with the kids four or five kids like that's hard oh it's yeah very time consuming i mean not a lot of people want that i guess or if they do they're not being public about it or being on social media about it because you know the the fucking trend is yeah. to be girl power and you know do your own thing but there's nothing wrong with stay-at-home moms all right shout out to all you stay-at-home moms you guys make the world better living my best life that's right. what you're doing 
But I do think because of the whole stigmatism around that, that all came from social media. Everything nowadays is tied into social media, mm-hmm. some little some way. Narrative. Yeah. Right. And I think it's because women think that because some women, I should say, not all women, but some do think like, oh, it's a new year. It's 2024. Let me do me. I can go do this. I can go do that. I can like have however many bodies I want and go be dirty and all this stuff. And like, if you want to go do that, do you by any means, but don't make that like, that's the thing. Like you're sad. I'm sorry. Don't make that a trend. (laughs) Like, get some help because mental illness. Okay. That's what that is. But I just think women, everyone nowadays are just so sensitive to like everything almost. Mm -hmm. So I feel like a lot of women in especially my generation are trying to make it seem like it's okay if a woman acts the way a dirty man would act. That's how I think they're looking at it. Like, the men that like kind of go around, get with whoever they want, and then they have like their big job, but then they have all like these little women following them or whatever. And I feel like they look up to that and they're like, I can do that. But you don't have any of the other things. Like you don't have the job, you don't have the stability, you don't have like any of this other stuff. Not that that's okay. Again, dirty. But I mean, Most people nowadays don't have morals. That's the thing where that comes into play. That's like, what do you care about? Right. I could agree with you on that. And like social media world, like I remember seeing Dan Bilzerian on Instagram popping off with millions and millions of followers and growing up, you know, every young guy wants to be like Dan, you know, have all these chicks, have a bunch of money and stuff like that. But like that to me is not cool no it's not something cool to me is being you know respectable man which means getting married having kids being you know loyal to your partner and respectful too right it's not it's not cool to disrespect women no like andrew tate fucking banging all these chicks fucking disrespecting women whatever he does like man power i'm all for being a strong independent male but then again just because you have money and status doesn't mean you have the right to have a thousand women you know what i'm saying like yeah that's not cool you know don't make it like the new normal to have a thousand women and you know not get married and not have kids and stuff like that let's that's not cool man like something cool to me is being traditional having a great family having a lot of kids and just having that family camaraderie and building that within not oh yeah i'm gonna you know bang as many chicks while my wife stays at home or my wives like yeah when did this become a thing I have no idea when that became a thing, but honestly, that whole kind of topic just gets me real excited for some reason because it's like, oh, and, but I'll, I'll see other podcasts of like these alpha males doing, when, when I say alpha male, I don't mean that in a negative way, but that is basically what they're trying to portray. They're not, but that's what they're trying to be. An alpha male, I would look at as dad. Dad is an alpha male. He has successful business. Not that you have to have a business, but he works to provide for his family. He's loyal to his wife. He's a great father to his children. That's the perfect guy right there. That is an alpha male. And he protects his family. He does, like, he's traditional. That is alpha right right there. But all these people that are like, oh, let me, like you said, I'm going to have my wife stay at home and I'm going to go get with all these chicks and come back because I pay the bills. No, if you're not respectful, you're not up there. You get lowered down each time you disrespect your wife. Right. Especially if it's intentional because you think it looks cool. Yeah. It's not cool to disrespect your wife, women, girlfriend, sisters, whatever. 
like it's just not and it it's it's not uh, it's not cool to you know disrespect women on any case no you know what i'm saying like i mean, mean if they disrespect you by all means if they cross a line fine i get it but like in even then it's just like why are you gonna waste your energy on that yeah but also i do think some women take that to their advantage okay. definitely some women do take that to their advantage and they're like, oh, you shouldn't disrespect women, but they'll be up in their man's face, screaming in his face, oh, yeah. smacking him around and shit. Yeah. Like, oh, my man would never do that. My man would never do this and all this bullshit. But I mean, it comes on both sides. Like, I won't disrespect a man just because he's a man. Right. You know what I mean? And that's another thing nowadays. Like, women are like, oh, fuck men, fuck men. Like, no. Like, fuck off. Like, you're just dumb. And that's why I think social media is mostly negative. Because it's making everyone be like, oh, fuck men. Like, they treated us like this. They treat us like this. All men are this. Using words like all, everyone, everything, every single time. Like, words like that is very powerful. And I don't think people really understand that. Like, if yeah. I say, oh... Every time I wake up, I get this headache. No, it was one day, but I mean, I was annoyed. That's like, a great point to like, because like, fuck all men. No, all the men you have dealt with. Because you know what I'm saying? Be men. It, it's like the narrative now is disrespecting men and go women power. Don't get me wrong. I'm also, oh. if you want to vote, go vote. If you want to have a nine to five, go have a nine to five. I will be home barefoot in my kitchen ordering on Amazon. Right. Like, if you want to do that, go to do each that. Their own. To each their own. Like, but, I mean, the narrative of, you know, disrespecting men, like, that that just needs to stop. Yeah. You know, that, it's not cool. Like, a woman saying, you know, I don't need a man. Okay. Fine. Okay. You ain't going to get one then. Like, it, it, I don't know why you got to portray that and like put all men. Like, no, it's not all men. Saying because all of everything. I live is. with almost all men. I've <laughs> lived with almost all men. And yeah. I know like every man in my family is not like those other men. Like, every time I've said I hate men. I've said it in front of all my brothers. Let I've said it at the you. dinner table. Let me interrupt you real quick. You hate all boys because men are respectable. Yes. When you're and boy, I learned that by having brothers. There's levels to this. Yes. You know I, and you're, I did learn that, but I used to say that all the right. time. Carry I on, used sorry. to say, I love, I, not I love. You're mixing up my sorry. words. Now I'm sorry. saying love. Yeah. <sighs> love you, but, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I used to walk around the house saying, oh, fuck men, fuck men. But that was because I was dealing with shitty little boys. I was dealing with shitty boys. Boys will treat you like shit. Not all, but men, like the brothers that I have, they're like basically my guideline for how I should be treated. Because, I mean, we do get into our sibling tussles, but I mean, other than that, it's like no, none of my brothers have ever disrespected me in a way that I was like, wow, like men like you suck. I've never thought that. All I have ever thought was, wow, men like you get really good women. Like, men like you deserve a really good, respectful woman. Like, I've always wanted the best for you guys. And that's because you guys are so respectful. And, like, now that I'm looking like you're engaged, like, Morgan, she's the perfect woman for you. Absolutely. Like, she's so respectful. She's beautiful. Like, She's just so beautiful, like inside and out. And you deserve that. And I know you treat her with respect. So that makes me look up to you guys. And I'm like, wow, like that's the kind of dynamic that I would like. And you guys basically set the standards. And you guys would always tell me like, oh, like, let me know. Like if he does this, I thought it was a joke, but it's not a joke. Nope. It's really not a joke. And I would like that. And you guys were always protective over me too. So it's like, I thought like, oh, my man needs to be protective. But I didn't really understand that until I had to go through the I hate men stage. Yeah. And then once you get out of that, you look back and you're like, 
it's definitely not all men. Like right now I'm in a really good relationship with like the best guy on the planet who deals with me and my mood swings. And he just like sits there and he's like, okay, let's just take a breath. <laughs> like, okay. Like I will do that. But Luca John. exactly. And I mean, he definitely has like reached my standards okay. and maybe even succeeded them a little bit because some of the things I've said to him when I'm angry on shark week, you know, it's pretty intense. Like I turn into a whole different person and I'll give him warnings. Like I'll tell him like, Hey, don't test me today, <laughs> but he does it anyway because he's a boy, but I mean, he's, he's a man. I would say he's a man and you know, just seeing you guys be the way that you are really helped me understand that it's not all men. Right. And I think that starts from mom and dad and how you're raised. Oh, yeah. You know, having a role model like dad, you know, showing us how to treat a woman within the household, I think is so important. And shout out dad and mom, like you guys are the best parents ever. Oh, yeah. Um, just being great role models. Like, dad would not allow us to disrespect women. No. And it starts with, I'm going to give a little advice to women in finding the guy that they're looking for. Green flag. If they treat their mom and sisters and women around in their life with respect, they're caring, they're loving to those people, green flag. Oh, yeah. Like, that shows a lot about that person. And I told Lily this. Look for a guy who treats his mother with respect and love. And that relationship is so important to analyze and how they interact with those people. I've, I've told you that many times, even with Sam, you know, and stuff when they were looking for guys and stuff like that. That's beyond important. I couldn't stress that enough. That just shows what type of guy he is. Because if you can't respect your mother, how are you on earth going to respect the woman you're with? Right. The answer is you're not. Yeah. Bottom line is. Also you know. with like the whole like relationships and everything and like the whole dynamic of that, I do feel like it does come back to how you were raised. And I do feel like I do have sort of a higher standard when it comes to relationships and the idea of love and the feeling of love and everything like that, because we do have mom and dad who were high school sweethearts. Like they lived a fairy tale. So I kind of do look up to that and they're still happy. Like a lot of kids grow up with like parents fighting and like doing all this stuff and like shit happens. But I mean, it does definitely help to have an understanding of what love is supposed to be and having role models to show us that was definitely one of the reasons my standards are so high. I think this is going to be a fascinating conversation real quick about our generational differences we had in high school. Yeah. So I'll let you go first. What do you think, just analyze your, your experience in high school, like what your generation kind of experience was. Well, I mean, everything, again, everything comes back to social media, mm -hmm. especially nowadays. Like you have your iPad kids and stuff. Like we had so many different kinds of cliques, I would say. And, you know, you still have your jocks, you still have your cheerleaders, you still have your loners, you still have your druggies, you still have your stoners, like, you still have got your nerds, like, there's still those cliques, but then there's just so much more of the in-betweens. And there's a lot of... I feel like everyone in my generation does everything for attention. Okay. And they all, nobody has their own personality. Their personality is formed from what they see on social media and what they deem to be cool on social media. What their phone tells them is cool and trending and, oh, this is how you act if you want to become like this or like videos like that and stuff like that. So they, nobody really has like a deeper personality. You can't have a real conversation with half of them 
honestly. That's why my group was so small. I know you had like a really big group, but I mean, my circle was real small because a lot of the girls, I mean, that's kind of the same thing, but a lot of the girls like the drama, a lot of the boys fuck around, like people get cheated on, people get this, you hear all this drama going around, but then, you know, in the background, as you're talking to your friend about this drama, you'll turn down Main Street and you'll just see someone with a tail walking by. A tail. A tail. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Yeah, so with that. Furries. Yeah. Basically, people that think they're an animal, okay? <sighs> okay, so I'm new to this this furry thing. Yeah. So if somebody has on a tail, do they have ears and, like, a cat some nose? Some do. And, well, some do. And do they, like, meow? <laughs> I mean, the biggest thing here is treat people how you want to be treated. Exactly. It, it's been said on one of my previous podcasts I had with Dad. If you treat people how you want to be treated, the world will be a better place. And it is absolutely true. If any person within that community treats me with respect, I will treat them with respect. Yeah. Bottom line. I, w I was friends with, like I said, Bottom I, line. So I don't many. care what you are. I don't care what you have. I don't care what you identify as. Yeah. Just relax. What's one experience or one situation? that you remember growing up that was just absolutely hilarious. That just sticks out to you. There's so many. Me and mom talked about one um, specific thing that happened. Go tune in to my mom's podcast episode if you want to see it. But I want to get your opinion. When Charlie would hide? Charlie would just fall asleep in different places, and then we couldn't find him. Yeah. Like or, behind the couch, underneath his bed. He would be watching like a little video and I don't even know on what because I don't even think like we had like real like YouTube videos that like everybody would want to like watch and shit because he didn't have like an iPad. I think you guys had phones like it, we like had, you guys we being younger phones, was like. Uh, we got phones around. Uh, what was your first phone? My first phone was a yellow 5C. Yeah, so you had an iPhone. Yeah. Like, my first phone was a fucking knockoff BlackBerry. Yeah. I was texting, like, do, 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 and then with the fucking arrows. Yeah. Yeah, like, for sure, it was a different... I don't even know how to work one of those. Yeah, like, back in my day, when I was young... Back in my day. Cool, okay, the, old man, you should I get your cane? The the when cool phone was called a sidekick. And you you would flip it up and if you could flip up your screen and it would just like and then you would type like with a full keyboard, oh dude, you were the shit. You were definitely the shit if you had a sidekick. Like I'm gonna throw up a picture of a sidekick. Um oh. That's just, that's crazy for me to think about. Like, we grew up so different. I actually made a video about this, kind of ranting about what I'm about to say on my TikTok, and I posted it. But, um, so if you want to go check that out. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to link all your socials in the description. So. Sick. But then, um, what's it called? I was basically saying, like, what would life be without phones and social media? Like, it would be mom and dad, how they grew up. Like, imagine calling your significant other on and they're line. on the landline and their parent picks up. <sighs> what? That's mind boggling to me because wow. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Me being as nervous as I am. No, I'm okay. You can call me. <laughs> I'm not. No, no. But no. then also like, you wouldn't know half of these people existed. You know what I mean? Right. Everyone would have to be their own person. Exactly. Because there's nothing that you sit at home and stare at. I mean, there was like magazines, like maybe some TV shows and like music and stuff like that. But like, you don't got a screen that you're glued to all day. Yeah. Like looking at it like, oh, look at this person. Look at that person. I know way too many people that are alive. Like that sounds kind of weird. But, like, when you really think about it, it's, like, 
I know so much random people. Like, if I didn't have a phone or social media wasn't a thing or, like, how TV is nowadays, if none of that was a thing, like, all, like, pop culture, like, stuff like that, I wouldn't know about anything. The last thing I'm going to say about social media is, like, we, we harped on, like, the negative stuff, but yeah. there's so much positive things yes. that come from technology and social media like you have access to so much awesome great information to better yourself and to learn as much as you want about anything oh yeah and the access you have from your phone is unbelievable and one piece of advice i could give to somebody that you know how to use social media, I think, to your, you know, to benefit yourself is something I did recently in the last couple of years is you got to manipulate your feed to what, to something that's going to bring you value. So I went through, I unfollowed a bunch of people that I don't have contact with that are not important. You know, it's like, fine. I mean, if you're going to get mad about me unfollowing you, so be it. But I'm using social media now to benefit myself. So I follow pages like Gary V, Tony Robbins, Joe Rogan, people that are actually going to bring me value that I actually can learn from. So my feed is way different than your feed, like scrolling through and you get, you know, a bunch of model pictures or women or this and that. It's like, I don't want to see that. That brings me no value. I'm not, I'm not going to waste my time mindlessly scrolling. So when I scroll on my different types of social media, I get quality content because I made it that way. But if you don't take that route and manipulate your own feed to what's going to bring you value, your social media is just going to waste your time as much as you're on it. Yeah. You know, so my advice would manipulate your feed, follow people that are going to bring you value. And that's my advice for social media. I think that's great advice. Right. Basically, I just think that's great. Lily, this was awesome. We're going to do this again. I really appreciate you coming on. We talked about a bunch of cool shit. Yeah. Um, shout out Lily. I'm going to link all of her socials in the description. You know, Lily, this was fun. Let's do it again. Oh, yeah, for sure. Right on. Yeah.